Today I'm going to speak about how we as Christians should walk and act. I'm going to read in the book of Ephesians chapter 5 and let's start in verse 1. It says, Therefore be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. We need to be imitators of God, Paul writes. And Paul says that we need to basically live our life as an example. An example for others to see Jesus inside of us. Verse 3 says, But fornication and all uncleanliness or covetousness, let it not be even named among you as is fitting for the saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. This is something that speaks to me. I've been known to be a, a jester, a jokester, someone who can speak sarcastically at times. But Paul says this is not how we are to live our life. And it speaks to me because I know that I have done these things as well, speaking in jest. And now it's okay to have fun and have a good sense of humor, but it's not out of, how should I put it, you should not be glorifying the world or things that are ungodly in jest, right? And that's something that not just all of us, but me as well, that speaks to me, that really does speak to me. Verse 5 says, For you know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has an inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Now let that sink in for a second. That's a very serious statement, Paul says. So it's best to stay away from fornication and live your life right in seeking a partner in life and be faithful to that partner. Do not go around sleeping with other men or women in any form or fashion. Pornography, men and women fall into this temptation all the time. We need to shun these things and keep away from them. And if we can do these things, remain focused and let the Holy Spirit speak to us and say, hey, stay away from that. You don't need to see that. You don't need to speak that. You don't need to lust after that, right? If we can do these things, and let the Holy Spirit rise up and take over in us, then we as believers, our fruit grows stronger in Christ. So here we go. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes on the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not be partakers with them. Now that's important. Don't be as clinging symbols of brass, right? Don't let your words be hollow, let your yes be yes, and your no be no. This is something we all need to take hold and let that sink in and root in us. Don't be a person of empty or vain words, because the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. God said in his word, I would rather have obedience than sacrifice, right? We have to remain faithful and do what God said. If we don't do what God said, then we are not his son. We are not his daughter. Therefore, let us do the words that Jesus taught us. And we have to let that sink in us and take hold. All men and women fall short of the glory of God, yes. But we got to repent of these sins. And turn away from these sins. Because verse 8 says this, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. That is important. Walk as children of light. We have to walk as the children of light. Sin is in darkness. Sin is very dark and very ugly and evil and rooted in much evilness and hatred. But if we walk in the light, the light exposes the darkness. 
So we should be as children of light, expose the darkness and expose the truth in all things. Jesus said it was the truth that would set us free. Let his truth set us free, amen? The fruit of the Spirit in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. Find out what is acceptable to God and walk in his light and walk in his example. Whatever God said to do, do. Express yourself and do all you can for the kingdom of God. We say it, but actually doing it, oh, we've got to be doers of the word. Being humble in all things, but do the word. Live it, breathe it. Amen. Have no fellowship with darkness, with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. Have no fruit with darkness. Have no life with darkness. Keep away from it. Shun it. We are to live as children of God. For it is shameful to even speak of those things which are done by them in secret. And all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. Whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep. Rise from the dead and Christ will give you life. Walk in wisdom. Then that you walk circumspectfully, not as fools, but as wise. So we need to be imitators of God. Walk in his light. Walk in his love. Do everything. Well, there's the saying, what would Jesus do, right? What would Jesus do? And whatever would Jesus would do, that is what we are supposed to do. Verse 16 says, The redeeming time, because the days are evil. Therefore do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Amen. Understand what the will of the Lord is. If you don't know what God's will is, pray. Seek after Him. Look in His Word. Dive in. Say, I don't know what you want from me. Well, dive in and read it. And not just read it, but live it. Amen. Do not be drunk with wine, in which is dispensation, but be filled with the Spirit. Amen. Not just be drunk with wine, because what is wine is like sugar, right? Don't be a glutton. Don't eat fats and sugars of this world just to be eating them. Eat for your nourishment, yes, but don't be a glutton of the world. Don't glean off of the world's fatness and sugar and obviously alcohol. Don't be a glutton to those things. Those things, they're not for us. Be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Giving thanks always for the things to God, the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Committing to one another in the fear of God. As in uh, was it, Proverbs, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It's the beginning of understanding. It's the beginning of your life and living your life in God's will. And when we live our life in God's will, He will lift us up. And you will be in a higher place than where you were in the world. You think the world offers you so much, but really... It's God's kingdom that offers so much more. And we as believers are afraid to dive into it. Me, as an example, there are many things I could have done for the kingdom of God that I have not done. I personally have not done. Now, it saddens God that he knows I could do better. And I will do better in Jesus' name. But that's an example for me that I could have been a better example to those who have listened to me. A lot of times I fell into the traps of the world, and I still do at times. There's many things that like to take hold of me and distract me from God's will. But amen. When we focus on Jesus, focus on what He wants for us, then we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus who gives us the strength. It's just we have to be persistent in doing it. Marriage. Great example. Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is the head of the church, 
and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. So, if you're still single out there in the world, anywhere, I don't care who you are, man or woman, be the vessel that you're called to be. If you're a man, act like a man. What it says in the word, when I was a child, I spake like a child. I did childish things, but when I grew up and became a man, I put away those childish things, right? That's what we need to do, men, is put away the childish things that we always uh, give in to. Oh, there's many childish things I've given into throughout my years. But if we are grown up, especially if we're grown up in the Lord, then put a, them away. They have no place in us them away and become a man that you're called to be and if you want to be married in life well then act like the man that God called you to be amen I can't speak to the wives but I can tell you what it says in the word it says they are to submit to their own husbands but to the men I can speak to it says for the husband is the head of the wife well act like a man and quit being someone who's not a man in helping and leading your household. Be a man. Word says what it says for women, but I can speak to the men in this. Be a man. Just grow up. Grow up. I just all the men that are listening to me, I speak this for myself too. Grow up. Grow up. And be the man that you're called to be. Verse 28 says this, Husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. So, if you truly love your wife, then you love yourself too. Treat her right. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes it and cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church. Amen. Oh, men. We always love our bodies. We try to uh, take care of it. We always feed it. We may not feed it the right things in this world, but we do feed it. Some men do take care of their bodies and they work out. Good for them. They nourish their bodies. But if you love your wife, you'll love yourself too, right? So in this, verse 30, we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. His bones, God's bones. This reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery. I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself. So let the wife see that she respects her husband. Amen. So, yes, be a man. Do the right thing in your own household and lead your household in prayer and leading children in knowing God. Grow up and lead your household. When you get married, be faithful to the one that you married. Don't go running around sleeping with someone else because they will say sweet something into your ears. Those temptations are not for believers. Those temptations is what we should shun and run away from. Those temptations are not, not godly. And we as believers need to run far away from them. Amen. So my brothers and sisters in Christ, this will be a new era for my videos and the work I do. I plan in God willing to post more and get back on social media as more if God is willing. Because for the longest time, I stayed away from much uh, social media in terms of preaching the gospel, I had shut down many of my accounts because I was fed up with a lot of stuff. But I realized we need to still be a light in the darkness because if we are a light in the darkness, the darkness will not comprehend it. I do a lot of the things because of my political beliefs, but you know, political beliefs, well, my thing is, I, I, think, I think about this. I leave Facebook, I leave these other platforms. But do I post things that are godly? Do I post things that are honest? Do I post things that are of good report? 
Do I post these things? I want to be a godly example, even on social media. I still post on the YouTube. I still post on X. But I know that a lot of strongest work I did over the years of me making videos for people that watched me was over Facebook. That's where my strength was at for the longest time. Now, wherever God leads me, I'll go. Maybe I was supposed to leave these platforms. I follow God's will best I can. And if he wants me to come back and be a light in the darkness once more in these places that I didn't care for, maybe I was to leave for a season, but I'll pray and see where God leads me. Lord, give me strength. Give me wisdom. Give me understanding. Give me a heart and wisdom in the ministry. There are so many things that I have done, good and bad. But now let me be a light in the darkness in all matter. Let me be a light and a shining example. I have done much good and much bad. I ask for your forgiveness, Lord. I ask for your forgiveness. Create in me a new and clean heart, one that is righteous and one that is acceptable unto you, Father. I want to do what's right in your eyes. Wherever I go, whatever I do, wherever I walk, whatever I preach and teach, let it be your words that come out of my mouth. Let your words speak the truth through me and let the truth set everyone who hears your word through me. Let the truth set them free. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you, my brothers and sisters.